Well, hello again, everybody. Sorry to be doing so many of these in a row. But this should be the last one for a little while anyway. Although there's, well, I lied about that. There's going to be one after this because I've got to figure out what's wrong with my laptop keyboard and try to fix it. But this is UXW Bill's Kitchen Table Electronics Repair. Tonight we have two patients. We have this nice little Sansui Quartz PLL Synthesizer Tuner, model number T1110. Oh, and my beloved stereo receiver, my little one. As you might remember, I said this thing was working well, except for the fact that sometimes when this little DC protection relay back here would allow the speakers to be connected to the circuit because the amplifier was working properly, well, the contacts were kind of burned and pitted on it. So I fixed that problem, but in the process of removing this lid from the relay, I caused another problem. Evidently, I got a little too rambunctious, and I broke some of the solder joints holding the relay in place. The way things are going right now, and the fact I broke my little receiver, I could write a country song, but I wouldn't have a receiver to listen to it on. So now I've got to try to get to the bottom side of the board, and I'm not sure how much of an adventure that's going to be, and try to solder that relay back into place and make sure that I found all the bad solder joints. That's the same problem with this Sansui tuner. I'll talk about it more in a little bit here. But first, I've got to get started with this. All right, so I found the bad solder joints. They're right there and right there and right in the right location to be killing power to the coil of the relay and keeping it from working. Now, the other solder joints on the relay seem to be okay as far as I can tell. Now, here's the funny thing about finding bad solder joints, if you've ever had to do it. It can be very, very difficult, especially on a board where everything is densely populated. So I'm going to go ahead and re-solder these two solder joints right here, and then I'm going to take a careful look at the other solder joints that work with the relay and provide the circuit path between the hybrid module over here and the speaker connectors in the back. Well, maybe there's some truth to the story I heard on a repair forum somewhere where somebody else with one of these amplifiers had uh, found it was cutting out on them randomly when they turned it on or even while it was playing, and when they went to work on it, they discovered bad solder joints around the relay coil. Maybe there's some truth to that because what solder was here just kind of disappeared when I touched it with the iron. So I actually got some solder out and I added a little and, and boosted up the quality of these joints. Now I'll have to at least put the bottom back on the receiver before I can test it again, but I'm hoping that will be sufficient to restore the relay to working order, and then I can see if the contacts are clean enough to allow for reliable operation. Now it's worthwhile to note if you find yourself working on one of these receivers and you have to remove the bottom cover to get at the solder side of the circuit board, it's worth noting that although there are arrows to tell you which screws to remove, First of all, there are arrows for places where there aren't screws. These might be used on different models. And also, there's two arrows pointing to these two screws right here. And the problem with these two screws is they are part of the assembly that holds the power transformer in place. So as you loosen them, you might need to support the power transformer with your hands to keep it from going thunk or breaking off the set of the other two mountings that it has. Okay, I've got the receiver flipped back over and put together far enough that I can safely test it. So let's turn it on here and let's see what that protection relay does. Within seconds of my turning the power on, it ought to close its contacts. You might have to watch carefully, they're kind of hard to see, but they're those little, well, I'm blocking all the light with my finger, but they're the little contacts right there at the end of the screwdriver blade. You can just see them close. You'll probably hear them first. Here we go. Yep, the relay works properly once again. So I have solved that problem. Now while I was working in this little receiver, I happened to notice a light bulb right behind the power button. And I thought that was kind of curious. I didn't know if maybe the power button somehow illuminated or what. Well, it turns out that that little light bulb actually lights up this part 
of the uh, dial in the unit. Now it wouldn't really have to and I suppose nobody ever missed it when it finally succumbed to failure because the display is backlit by a different bulb. Well this bulb is bad and I want to replace it. I pulled it out of its little mounting to discover unplug the receiver here I pulled it out of its mounting to discover that it's nothing more than a little automotive style bulb much like this one right here it's even a 12 volt bulb so for a, a princely 89 cents I bought a replacement and now I'm going to install it in this receiver to restore the operation of that little light because while I'm in there I might as well now when this little receiver was assembled with this bulb the people who made it just decided to simply pinch the terminals onto the leads after folding them down from the bulb. I've tried to unpinch these a couple of times now and I wasn't successful so I think my only option here is going to be to cut the leads and discard that bulb, flip down the leads on my new replacement bulb, and then solder them together which is going to take a little bit of care because I don't have the most leeway in which to work here and I really don't want to drip solder inside the receiver somewhere because that would really ruin my whole day. Alright, I've taken the old bulb out of the picture. I saved the little bulb cover that goes over it because that probably alters the color of the bulb or something. And I've prepared these wires by stripping back some unexposed by stripping back some unexposed wiring. Now all I've got to do is modify this new bulb by flipping its contact leads down and soldering them into place, which I will do very carefully. All right, there's one of the new leads soldered to the bulb. Now my solder shield is a kitchen napkin, which was quick and easy to find. And it's unlikely that I'll start anything on fire with it, but if I do, hey, I'm in a kitchen. I've got a glass of water. And there's the new bulb, ready to be pushed back into its little holder. Now, because skin oils can sometimes leach through the surface of these little automotive bulbs, it'd be a good idea to rub this down with some isopropyl alcohol before putting its little pajama back on. And let's just try it out real quick here and make sure that it works. Looks beautiful to me. And there's the finished product all put back together and ready to be put into the front panel on this receiver. We'll test it out and see what happens. Well, it's a little tight. I probably would have done well to figure out a way to extend the wires or maybe cut a little less off of them and make do. But the important part is that if we turn the receiver on, that dial now lights up where it didn't before. Now, it doesn't seem like there's a dial light over here on this other end. At least there's not another light of that style in the receiver other than for the one that lights up the tuner. But that pretty well concludes this unit's repair. Now all I have to do is glue the cap back on the relay and everything should be fine once again. In closing, there are two things I'm curious about on this receiver. The first is this one right here. As you can see, there is a resistor soldered between one side of the AC power line and one side of the speaker connections. Since this is not a polarized cord, I think that means in theory that some level of line connected current could end up on your speaker wire and I'm not sure why they would have done that. I'm not sure what purpose that serves in the circuit. The other thing that's kind of neat is how this thing uh, maintains its tuner memories. It's got a little rechargeable button battery down here and it looks like there were actually some engineering smarts here at work. Again, maybe they learned the hard way because they put a rubber jacket around that battery and they sealed the bottom with some kind of glue so if it ever leaked it would be hopefully contained. Now this little Sansui tuner that I was talking about has a similar problem. Bad solder again. At first the vacuum fluorescent display would blink on and off but I think that was a bad connection on the circuit board. There's a little light bulb that lights up these two indicators and these two buttons and it definitely has a solder joint that's bad so I'm going to duck in there real quick and fix it. And here's the problem with the light bulb in the Sansui tuner. This left hand solder point here is cracked so the light bulb flickers on and off as it makes contact. As soon as the soldering iron warms up, I'll have it fixed. Those glowing buttons sure do look nice. How to see if the repair is robust? Play the bongos on it. See if the lighting flickers. Seems to work fine. Another successful fix.